Hi there, it's Jules at Autistic Radio. I'm alone here today, just finishing off a little bit of editing here in the studio. It's quiet and it's comfortable. It's nice to sit in front of the microphone and just think about what's ahead of us. Things have gone really quite quickly here at Autistic Radio, much quicker than I expected. We don't advertise, but people are finding us naturally. Perhaps you're telling somebody else what you've heard. There's a few podcasts that we've made, a few different threads, a thread on travelling with Autism Adventures Abroad, some conversations with professionals, a very difficult and controversial one on ABA. There have been autistic organisations speaking with us. Soon we will be speaking with Autism on the Water. Other broadcasters like Evelyn over at Autistic Voices. On Monday, there's something we must remember. Autscape. Autscape Autscape.org. If you haven't heard of Autscape, it's a rather special place. For many years, it's been an in-person autistic festival. A playground where people completely unmask meet up with other people and maybe for the first time they're in a very large group of autistic people being naturally and authentically themselves. We are very much supporters of Worldscape here. It's a bit one way at the moment, but they'll get used to us. It's not too late to join Worldscape online. One of the innovations that they've started in the last few years is having the presentations, it's a conference, having the conference presentations available if you go to Teams. It's a £30 or $30 or so cost, which is a little bit pricey, but it's a charity and it's authentically autistic so if you can afford that if you can get the family together maybe it's a good idea it starts on monday plenty of interesting things going on at autoscope i've looked at the figures here at autistic radio and i've been quite surprised how people are listening to us all the way around the world in different countries not just on the Podbeam app, but uh, on Google and all the different places. It's a very nice feeling that many of you don't just listen to one little snippet, but you come back and listen to more of the podcasts, and they're all very different from each other. Podcasts and live broadcasts. Every Sunday we make a live broadcast about an hour and a half and if you go to our website autisticradio.com you'll get the details on that and you can listen to them again it's a way of hearing the rough and ready uncut version of what autistic people say recently we had a podcast with a professional called richard we're cooperating with him in an autism network. It was very interesting to hear his take on the history of autism and the way autistic people have been represented over the years. I don't really want to spoil that by telling you too much about it, so maybe you should go and find that. It's being downloaded often at a rate above the average. 
one of our other cooperations with the professionals is the audio model of advocacy. We are providing little presentations of audio to groups of professionals so that they can hear our take on the subject that they want to discuss. And because we prepare it ourselves in advance, it's a bit easier for us than if we went in person. It's working well. It's being well received. We have a researcher called Lindsay. She'll be making a podcast with us soon. We've spoken to her before. And she's researching the links and the possibilities of the differences between the autistic experience, growing older and perhaps developing dementia, and the general population, and differentiating between the different experiences, if that turns out to be the case, and what might need to be modified. I'm looking forward to Lindsay coming back. We'll be taking part in her research long term here at Autistic Radio. It could be five years or so. I see from my emails that Richard would also be um, coming back for a second conversation where he talks about the development of autistic representation and what the future might hold for us. It's always interesting to hear the professionals take in comparison to how we might feel because they're often very different. The experiences are very different if you're a somebody who's being supported or somebody who's working in the profession. Occasionally we say things to each other that surprise each other, and I think that's a good way for the professionals and the autistic population to interact. It might be a little while away, but Evelyn from Autistic Voices and Ed Elf, which is a therapy based on hypnotherapy for autistic people. She's very experienced in audio. She has her own podcast, which you can find out there, Autistic Voices. And she'll be returning to interview us in September. The professional that I hope will build a very large number of podcasts with us because it's such an important subject is Andrew Swartfigger. Here in the UK he is important in the association that represents the professionals who use ABA Applied Behaviour Analysis. Yes. We are an authentic autistic organisation entirely made up of autistic people with some very different experiences and backgrounds of therapy and we are speaking to a very important person within the ABA movement. And I know that that is very controversial. I wrote a short email to Andy recently. I'll just give you the details of that. What I said to him was that as far as the recordings I'm doing with him go, my judgment is that without completing one or two more conversations that then get released close together, that the work we're doing together could be misinterpreted. We need to create a fuller picture of our conversations before we risk there being a reaction. I told him the that the team here are committed to learning about ABA here in the UK as it is right now. And the UK 
itself is not represented by the very wide variation of ABA practice around the world. I think there's a domination of the discussion amongst us in the autistic community that is very certain that all forms of ABA are difficult. If you look through the message boards, what dominates is a past of hurt and harm. But our assessment also is that there's a wild west of therapy going on out there and that there's a need in the UK for statutory regulation and that needs to be facilitated. What is missing generally is information. Information on what ABA practice is and explanations of it as a therapy. If ABA's intention is to benefit autistic people, then it shouldn't be hidden away from us. And we need to be part of the conversation, even if it's a difficult conversation for us to have. I know I'm going to receive criticism for taking part in that. But I'm still going to go ahead. I've told Andy that he is going to communicate with us in a rounded form through the conversations. I'm autistic and I also raised an autistic daughter with an autistic wife. I've expressed to him that my experience is of us as a family, as of parents, translating the non-autistic world to my daughter and teaching her two different alternative forms of communication. Fluency in two communication languages, the home unmasked autistic language and the language that we had to use to navigate through the rest of the world. Fluency in two communication languages. I hope that when I gain more knowledge of what AB is, ABA is right now, as it's practiced right now, that I can expect to recognise some of our experiences. I don't expect, and I have told him clearly, that I do not expect to find that ABA is a perfect system of, author of therapy. I am incredibly aware of its past. He agreed with me that some inputs from experienced and open-minded autistic people should over time be allowed to improve the outcomes for autistic children. Everything can be improved incrementally. It can't be improved if there's no communication. The first step is the one to start conversations, have them open and frank, communicate the realities and deal with some of the prejudices. That's quite a tough ask for some people who have had really bad experiences. But I think it is a valuable conversation. We'll see how it goes. We've been invited here at Autistic Radio to use our audio advocacy model to speak at the regular meeting that the lead officers of the local authorities, all the local authorities here in Scotland, have to discuss topics around autism. 
and they have decided this September to talk about ABA and PBS. The question is framed in such a way as to how could it be modified? What could be an alternative way of improving the outcomes for autistic people? Especially autistic people who live in non-autistic homes and have to negotiate their difference with non-autistic parents and siblings. And we're going to use our audio advocacy model there. We're going to speak about it amongst ourselves and then make a presentation in audio for them to think about and discuss. I've written down six points and I want you to get back to me on them and think about them yourself. The first point I've written is that it should not be assumed that all autistic advocate groups work against ABA. Though it is true to say the general situation is that by far the majority are in opposition to any increase of the use of ABA and many or most would prefer to see ABA removed altogether. Advocacy groups do not have enough information on the new developments in ABA to differentiate from the horrors of the past. For us to comment on a therapy that may have changed and may have developed, advocacy groups need up-to-date information and it's not made readily available. The conversation we are having with Andy is really unusual. ABA proponents are not often willing to communicate. They are protecting themselves because of the political history. This is leading to the retention of previously developed misconceptions of ABA by advocacy groups of influence. If there's something better about it that we need to know about it, it's not being communicated to us. How can we do anything else other than work on the past? Without an effort from the ABA proponents to communicate better, here in the UK there's going to be a risk of unnecessary disruption to the statutory UK recognition of the profession. And ABA will stay unregulated in the Wild West good and bad, and nobody can tell which is which. If there is a good version of ABA, it needs to be protected. It's possible that we as autistic people are working against ourselves. Autistic advocacy groups may work against the best interests of the autistic population and oppose the recognition of the profession. In short, we don't know enough and they won't tell us. But there is a chink. There is a slightly open door. Andy Swart figure is speaking to us here on Autistic Radio. And I hope you will support us in that. Even if it's just to find out. Even if all of your prejudices and all of your expectations and all of your worst fears turn out to be founded well, we will have at least given an open hearing and an opportunity. When I put those points out to Andrew, he responded to me. 
he took the criticism that we didn't have enough information. He took the understanding of the controversy. He took the reservations that autistic people have. And he took it all in his stride. He said those points that I'd made look great and that he agreed with them. He said he was more than happy to help moving forward. He said it was a really pleasure working with Autistic Radio. He has spoken widely about our conversation with his colleagues in different arenas and there has been universal approval that there is now a dialogue. So here's the question. Am I a naive fool? What is it that you know about ABA? Are you an ABA practitioner? Can you explain more to me? Are you somebody who is happy with what you're receiving at the moment? Is your child being looked after by a competent ABA practitioner? And yes, also, people who need to inform me about what I'm missing, you will have to come forward and have your words too. It needs to be a full conversation. You can email me directly, news at autisticradio.com. You can advocate, you can put your voice, and you can make this conversation real and honest and open. So, moving to something a little lighter. Coming soon, Harry has arranged for an organisation called Autism on the Water to join us soon. It's an interesting organisation, autistically led, with two different sites, one in Scotland, one on the south coast, and autistic people on the water sailing. And I can just imagine how cool and therapeutic that must be. All the sounds of water, all the sensations. I'm really looking forward to finding out about that project. Liz is working on something rather amazing. She's working with Otto on a kind of alternative voice radio show. People using alternative communication. Not non-speaking, but people who have a different way of communicating. That might be with um, a generated voice, it might be in text. And here we're thinking, why should radio and audio just be about people who use their own natural voices? There are many other ways of communicating and autism is a broad church. It'd be really cool. I remember recently the BBC documentary with a young chap expressing himself who doesn't speak and the words he put together were so crucially interesting when he was given a way of finding a voice. It was a very succinct, intelligent piece that he put together, Murray. So I look forward to that. We also have Jim Taylor. 
Jim is a guy who has been working with autistic people for many years and advocating for them. Currently, one of his jobs is working with some of us who have got ourselves on the wrong side of the criminal justice system. And he recently described how one of the clients he works with said that Jim was translating the world of the criminal justice system to him and him to the criminal justice system, a translation exercise. And that metaphor is something that runs throughout my life. I'll be looking forward to that again. The really light fun part, I hope, will be a couple of projects we have with Autism Adventures Abroad. Alex, the boss there, is taking a month trip in Europe by Eurail Pass. So he'll be travelling through many different European countries. We recently did something with him on a, a month he had in Florence. And he'll be travelling by Eurail train. He's sponsored by Eurail. And during the trip, he plans to be a roving reporter with short updates on the trip from many different places. And then, on the other side, he's going to turn himself into the interviewer when I leave to go to Delhi and further into the mountains in India. So he'll be making a recording or two when I'm travelling. So... Both of those are a little bit lighter. The Altscape Conference. Now that happens on Monday. And yes, you can go to altscape.org and you can get yourself up for online tickets. And I suggest you try and do that. I think they sell, stop selling tickets on Sunday. So you've got a couple of days. The conference is being recorded. And... We're hoping that they will make those recordings later on and maybe put themselves out as podcasts or provide them on a pay-per-view. But it's not the same as being there. If you're actually there at the conference when, when people are making their presentations, you get to read through all of the comments and take part in online discussions. So if you can, I would try and be there during the three days of the conference next week and see what you can do about that. Either way, after the conference, they're unlikely to give us the opportunity to use the recordings. They, they don't reply to our emails, but we will still be talking about them. And we'll make lots of notes on the different presentations there from autistic people to autistic people and create a series of podcasts about Altscape. So there we go. It's time for me to turn off the computers, close down the microphones and make my way out. If you have some ideas for audio, for podcasting, for your own podcast, maybe you want to practice and join us for a while and then launch yourself. We will make space for you. We'll try and enable you to get as many autistic voices out there See you next time. JawsAutisticRadio.com